Hey people, so today I'm making a video about all the things I tried to overcome targeting um, and things I bought as well because I did try and bought quite a lot of things. I started doing my own research and started buying a lot of stuff. People in my family were complaining that, well specifically my dad was complaining that I was spending too much money and I was buying random things and loads of stuff that wasn't necessary. So I wanted to go over because I know when you're up against the wall in terms of targeting and you're being harassed and tortured, you want to find ways to minimize the experience that you're having or to like overcome the kind of like uh, the, the torment that you go through. So um, I wanted to go through the stuff that I bought that I that I thought would help me and just review them in a sense, just to see, if, to, to explain if they were useful or not. Um, I'm gonna try and make this a quick video because I don't wanna like talk too long, It'll probably bore you. So I'm just gonna quickly go through some of the things that I bought. I'll try and remember how much I paid for them. I will explain why I bought them. And then I will explain how, if they benefited me or not, if they had the effect, the desired effect that I wanted or if they didn't. And I'll also, at the end or maybe throughout the video make recommendations as the things that I think targeted individuals could benefit from. Um, so let me just, without further ado, just start with what I, with the, the things that I have. So, so I think when I was, so one of the experiences that I had going through this was the, like nightmares, bad nightmares and things like that. And um, a lot of people in my family and friends suggested to me maybe I had like a bad, like negative energy in my flat or my around my surroundings. So, and also there was like a brief instance when it felt like there was some sort of entity, like a presence that was in my flat at the time and it had a smell to it. And I would always have this smell and it felt like something was present. So I went and I bought sage. So um, they call it smudging, I believe. and. This was about ten pounds, I believe. For this, or I think is it ten pounds? Uh, yeah, I believe this was ten pounds. <clears throat> Pardon me, I almost tricked there. But anyway, this was ten pounds, and I burnt it and went around my flat saying positive things and like asking bad energy to be cleared from my flat. Be careful if you have carpet in your flat or your home and you burn sage because sometimes once the um, the leaves burn they fall onto the carpet and they they can burn the carpet so like go around with like maybe a, a, a bowl with some water in, in it underneath as you're passing it around so that's one thing that um, you should be cautious about did it have the desired effects that I wanted um, so I was having nightmares every night and I went around with this to clear the energy in my flat that night I had a bad dream, it was a sexual one, but it wasn't the same as the previous dreams that I had been having before. So I would say it helped slightly, but it it made my, a bit less negative. It made my dream, like the dreams I was having was a bit less negative, but it also made my environment feel a bit more fresh and, and like and clear. The instructions on this how to use it was to burn it around your flat, say some, and positive affirmations and there was a list of things that they mentioned I'm not gonna go into them now maybe I'll do another video on it but then also after you burn and like smudge is what they call it they smudge your environment open a window and let all of the smoke out so that all the negative energy will leave so that's what I use it for would I buy it again I think I would and I'll probably burn it every six months or maybe once a year because it did have a like I, the, the environment felt refreshed. So that's the benefit I'd say I had. Now, um, this is another one that I'm gonna talk about now is something that to me was, had a really like beneficial, I had a very beneficial experience using it. So um, for me, it was crystals. I bought, you can't really see clearly because it's quite bright in here, but I bought, I believe this is celatine, celatine crystals. And I, this isn't the original one that I bought that was I found very useful. It was like this, but it was more like a pyramid, but the same length, but like, it wasn't a pyramid. I'm not sure what you described that um, shape, but it looked like a pyramid, but it was longer. So it was like this length, but like in a pyramid shape. And it had um, like smooth um, sides. 
and I used to clear my body when I was feeling like possessed when I felt like I felt possessions or when I felt um as if like I had uh mostly possessions in my body or if I was feeling pain if sometimes they induce pain into your in your body so I would pass this over my body sort of like this every morning when I woke up just to clear all possessions and whenever I had pains I would use this to block the signals that were being sent to my body to prevent it from um, having a long-term effect. And it, it was really effective when I was extremely sensitive. Over time, I when I went on the medication, it started to numb me a bit. So I wasn't as sensitive to crystals as I, as I was in the beginning. But in the beginning, I was extremely sensitive to crystals. I could feel if it was a real crystal, I could feel if it wasn't a real crystal. So I truly now believe that crystals do have energy that they let off because I experienced it before, I could actually feel the impact it had on my body. But as I started to change my diet, and um, I think I think it was when I changed my diet, not when I went on medication, but when I changed my diet, I I became numb to the to the energy that was being released from the crystals. But I still believe they have they still do the same effect, even though I can't feel it anymore. So what I would do is I'd pass it over the areas where I felt like heavy or like feeling. Um, negative energy and then it would clear at the time but now I haven't I haven't really been using it recently but if you're in the thick of targeting I would say this is a useful something useful to purchase it was about this I think was about five pounds so maybe I think seven dollars in the US I'm not sure um so yeah and I bought several of these I've got this one I've got like two of these um and I bought yes the one I bought before broke so that was the one that was really useful that and the shape of it was very effective these are not as effective as that shape it was more like a I don't know what you would call it but it, it was an elongated pyramid and it was shot and it the sides were very smooth and I would use that and that was very helpful also another crystal that I bought this I would say cost me about 30 pounds um this is um, amethyst and I was told it wards of negative energies. Now, like I said before, I was very sensitive to crystals and other things. So when I went to the shop, I wasn't even going to buy a crystal. I was going there to buy, I think it was incense. And the guy told me to hold it and see if how I felt. So I held on to it and it had like, it was so impactful. I, I could feel the energy moved through my hand and I just realized and I just at that time I was like yeah no I'm gonna buy this and it was about 30 pounds I'm not sure how much it would be in American dollars maybe like um uh 36 or 37 dollars not I actually I'm not sure at the current rates at the moment but um I would have to check that but I'm not sure but yeah so this was um a bit more pricier uh but it did have it did help when I was experiencing pains on my back that they were inducing I would put this there to block the signals and it really did help. Um, it was temporary, although like after a while it wear off, but in the beginning it was very effective. And also when I used to get like the sexual targeting, when I used to try and like, um, so sort of like rape simulation type things, I would put this between my legs and just go to sleep with it so that I wouldn't wake up and have that feeling. And it was effective temporarily, but after a while it stopped to become effective. So it helps if you're trying to like numb the experience that you're going through temporarily, it doesn't last long term. But I've always found it um I've always like I've I always like having it around and um I just yeah, I think I would buy if I was to, if I had to was going through the experience again, I would definitely buy this. Um I don't think this was a waste of my money. I think this was worth it. Another thing that I bought in the same kind of uh, region was these yoni eggs. So these are crystals. The one I used wasn't this black one. It was a quartz, a rose quartz crystal. And it shapes like an egg and you put it up your private parts. For, for females, we put it in our vaginas and apparently it clears out negative energy. I use it to, when I was in the sexual targeting, I use it to block out any kind of energy trying to enter into my private parts. So the one I, I used was a, a, a rose quartz crystal and it was shaped like this. But I'm actually not like, I'm not so keen on like using these things. I'm not so, yeah, 
I wouldn't say this was helpful at all. I wouldn't buy this again. I think this was about, um, I don't know how much I bought this for, maybe like three pounds, four pounds. So I don't think I would buy this again. This, these weren't effective. I wouldn't use that again. Um, another thing that I purchased. So one of my more expensive purchases I, I bought when I was going through my targeting was clothes. Um, so this is a hoodie. If I'll show you, I don't know if you'll be able to see. So this was about, I bought, so this is meant to be, so apparently the fibers are silver. It has silver fibers incorporated in it. And this is to stop electromagnetic fields or electromagnetic energy from entering into the body. And um, it's, this is the hood and it's a bit bright so you might not be able to see it properly. This cost me, I think this and this is the hood. These are the pants, these are the trousers. Um, and I bought socks so I could cover all of my body. Because when I was going out, I was being like affected. Like as I talk about den demonic like witch attacks, I was getting a lot of attacks like that. So when I would go out, I would feel things like, like being, I was being manipulated in different parts of my body. I'd feel pain. I'd feel like energy, my energy changing. I feel like attacks. So I wanted to cover up from head to toe. So I bought this. The problem with this, I think it cost me about, uh, 200 pounds so it's a lot uh maybe 300 dollars but it was it, so this one was it was really expensive i only wore it twice um it didn't have the desired effect that i wanted even and they say like one of the issues i have with this material is that because it's made out of apparently it's got silver threads inside it it prevents you from being um like microwaved and from being harassed using Hello, electronic um technology so like they use phones sometimes to like can, to get at you and um this you can't wash it in the washing machine because it would stray the fabric you have to wash it in a very special i think it's like spring water or like um what's that like filtered extremely filtered water like um I can't remember what it's called now, but you have to use very special water to wash this and you can't use detergent or soap. You have to use a special soap to wash this. So the thing is you can buy it, but you'd have to buy the detergent and you would have to get like a, one of those um, water filters to use to, in order to filter the water in order to wash it. So in that way, it wasn't practical. Also the appearance of it is that it's not that attractive when you wear it. It looks like pajamas. It looks like house clothes. So you can't really wear it out. Or I found I couldn't really wear it outside. So in a sense, it was kind of useless to me because I had to wear it under my clothes. And um, yeah, so it was a bit inconvenient. But I was so desperate at the time because of my targeting that I just decided to purchase it. And I decided I'd wear it every day to bed, everything. And I would, like, I would not be seen without it. But um, yeah, so, but then... Um, Something spilled on this and I haven't on the, these are the trousers or the pants. Something spilled on it. And um, so I haven't been able to wear, the, wear it since. Um, I never really tried wearing it to bed and I didn't feel the benefit of it. I didn't, re like I, I couldn't tell, um, I couldn't see any difference. So for me personally, this was a purchase that I probably would not have, something I would not have purchased if I had, if it was had my time again. Okay, another thing that I purchased, this was not pricey, but um, let's just grab it. So I bought a salt lamp because I was, I remember reading about salt lamps or finding out about them. And they said apparently that this would help to deter electromagnetic field, like energy and like directed weapons and things like that. Not weapons, but like it's apparently it um, prevents or reduces the amount of EMF that is in the environment. So I bought this salt lamp and I bought it. This was 15 pounds, maybe like uh, $20. I'm not sure. I can't, I don't know with exchange rate at the moment, but like, yeah. So I bought this and I thought it would help my environment. Now, one of the things with this is that most of the ones I've come across that you purchase have really weak um, lamp, like light bulbs. The light bulbs are not very strong and they go off very easily. 
and I found that they were able to manipulate the light bulb. It will keep flickering all the time. And yeah, so I, it wasn't that effective in like what it was doing, but it does cause you to have, it has a very soothing, cause the lights are not very bright. It's a very soothing experience when you have this light on and you switch off the main light. It's just very nice and it's very peaceful. But as I said, the lamp light um, is not very strong. And so it, it runs out quickly and um it dies very fast and it, sometimes it flickers as well i found that they were messing around in my technology so it would flicker at the most inconvenient times so it wasn't the most reliable of all um purchases but i do like the lamp light and i do like the light it produces and i do like the atmosphere it creates so i would buy it again um because it was only 15 pounds and so i bought one for most of my family as well and I think they really like theirs and they use theirs. And it just has a very soothing environment, like creates a soothing environment. Okay. Another thing I purchased. Um, so this comes in two parts. So this is one of it. So as I said before, I don't know if I mentioned it in any of my other videos. Um, I used to, I, to this, well, recently it started to happen again. But before I used to experience smells. Now, it felt like there was someone following me, like an invisible, like a ghost, for example, that had a smell about it. And this smell sometimes smells like a homeless person. And it just appears sometimes in different areas of, of my environment. And um, it was very disturbing. I know other people who go through this experience talk about they have smells. And sometimes they can be different things, not always like one person explained that they smell burning flesh sometimes so I bought this incense burner and I also bought it to clean my environment because um I bought let me say this is just this I think was how much is this I think this was 10 pounds and inside there is just a candle and the candles you have to keep buying so yeah I, um the candles can over time become quite expensive so you just put water in the top you pour in the incense and you light the candle and it will start to um, go into your environment and create a smell. So the incense that I bought was frankincense because I it has a very biblical, you can't read it now, but it has a very biblical connection to like cleansing spirit. So it's just, it says here spiritual oil, but it cleanses um, your environment apparently. And so that's why I bought it. And uh, I wanted to clear like bad negative energies, like dark forces, demonic forces, anything that was negative in my environment. So I purchased um, frankincense and the frankincense was about five pounds. It was probably like 4 99 This one for a big bottle, I think it's like six pounds or 6 And um, smaller bottles were like two pounds, two or three pounds. So for this, um, I, do I I do enjoy burning incense. Um, I stopped. I haven't used this in a long time. I I have stopped. I will probably try and get back into the habit of using it. But I decided that I don't want to use ones that burn candles because candles can be quite toxic when you burn them in your environment and you're breathing in that air. Um, I want to get the electronic um, incense burner, and I intend to buy this for myself at one point in some at some time in the future, and. That one uses water and it's like a mist that goes up into the environment. Um, this one is very drying. So it causes it causes the the air to be very dry. And sometimes the quite thick, thick, um, sometimes it's quite thick, the environment, like the air, when you breathe it in and you're using the incense. Um, sometimes it also creates smoke because you can never really tell the impact that the candle burning the water and like evaporating. And then if you don't switch off in time, it starts to turn to smoke. So you have to be careful with it. And the incidents that happened was that if you don't get proper candles, so I'll show you the candle in here. So this is a cheap candle. So you can see, it's a, I don't know if you can tell, but it's not very smooth. It doesn't burn evenly. Um, also, the incident that happened was that we, at my at my parents' house, um, I burnt one of the candles, and we were burning incense, and it just exploded in a flame. I don't know what kind of um, oil or kerosene or whatever they were using to 
make the candle but it turned into like a ball of fire and so i'm just very cautious about candles and obviously you don't want to cause a fire in your house so that's why i want to get the electric um diffuser so probably i'll probably get one of those and they can range from about like 10 pounds to 30 pounds but they're not very expensive like 30 pounds would be the most okay and then the next thing i got because of the experience i was having and i was trying to get rid of the impact of negative energy on me and negative forces and um microwave technology and all those type of things i bought and then i was having nightmares so i tried to get rid of those nightmares and apparently crystals help you to um to balance your energies or to put you on a positive um frequency so i bought this this is a broken version but um i do have a i did go and rebuy it again this I th this was either a bracelet or a necklace but it, it had all of the crystals on it. And I go to bed wearing this every night. Um, I haven't, it's been almost, I don't know how long it's been, but I've been wearing this every night. And this helps to eliminate nightmares. It doesn't eliminate them completely. It just reduces the amount of times that I have nightmares and the impacts of the nightmares. So this is just a crystal. And I think this was £9.99. So maybe like $15 or maybe a bit more than that. But like, yeah. So this was like £9.99 um, and I bought, this one's broken, but I bought another one to replace it. And this was helpful. I would buy it, I would keep replacing this one if it keeps breaking because it's got very, the problem with this is that the, the it's elastic and elastic snaps sometimes. So I have to keep going to replace this. But I would definitely purchase this again if it broke because it does reduce it has the effect of reducing my nightmares and i do find when i don't wear this i have more nightmares so i will definitely do that um this next one is a bit controversial and um like i have to well i'll show you and then we'll talk about it but um so it's two things here so this is um turpentine uh this costs 2.99 i don't know if you can see it there So I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't see it properly. But it costs two ninety nine, and this is pure turpentine in a glass. Now this is very important. Now the reason why um, I'm showing you this, it, like everybody should be cautious who does do this and who has heard of it and are thinking of doing this. But I heard from I heard on YouTube there was like a woman discussing the benefits of drinking turpentine. Now turpentine is normally used as a stripper for paint and to cleanse like brushes and stuff when you're using for paint. Do not digest, do, do not ingest turpentine. Um, I would like, I would say be very careful. But this woman said that t digesting, a, like the turpentine normally is industrially made and they mix it with different things. And that's why I say don't ingest um, general turpentine this was specifically purchased from a glass because obviously plastic melts into the turpentine and and, to and makes it toxic but this is but a glass doesn't so um i purchased this because this woman was advising that if you drink uh maybe two teaspoons a t teaspoon a day of turpentine with sugar in it it would help to cleanse um parasites from your body like all kind of parasites and I thought it would help to get rid of some of the nanotechnology that was in my body. And um, she suggested either two options. So you get a tablespoon or no, a teaspoon, fill it with sugar, pour the turpentine on it and, and eat it every morning before you eat anything else. And they, she said that it would, um, this is why I understand it. This is why I understand it would just, it would kill candida. Now, candida is a whole nother topic by itself. Um, but for those who don't know what candida is, so we have bacteria that live inside our body. And normally to get, to kill bacteria, you would take um, antibiotics. Now we have superbugs, which have become resistant to antibiotics. And the reason they're able to survive um, things like antibiotics is because they have like a, a cytoplasm, like a shell that they cover themselves in and it prevent and it prevents them from being killed but turpentine apparently can kill candida candida is a bacteria form which affects the body when it 
the body's in a bad situation, like in a bad, if you're in a bad health, it can take over the body and it can affect your moods. So it's kind of like a parasite that can control your, your emotions, your moods, can control your thoughts and those type of things. So it's a parasite that takes over the body and influences your experience on, um, your experience. So they say it can, like turpentine can destroy candida. And a lot of people have tried to go on healthy diets to try and overcome the effects of candida. Normally we have low levels of it in our body. Well, you're meant to have low levels of it in your body, but when it gets too, um, when it over overproduces or becomes too much, it has a negative effect on you. So people can suffer from depression and other negative um, mental health issues due to having um, too much candida. So one of the options was a sugar one where you put a spoon, tablespoon, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of sugar, pour a few dro- like pour some of this to fill the tablespoon and then eat it. Um, the other option was to have it with, and it's this, if you can see, this is organic castor oil. So castor oil makes you go to, if you, you consume castor oil, it makes you go to the toilet. Um, it makes you, um, like you have poo, your poo out your, um, your, like everything that you've eaten. And so this, turpentine is toxic if you have too much i don't know if it can kill you but it's not good for you and the you can have very if you do not if you do not pass it out your system you have to make sure before you even think about like i would advise strongly if you've heard about this don't like go for my video go and do your research but if you do decide to go on this turp like turpentine um cleanse i would strong i would advise strongly that you do as much research as possible because you can really hurt yourself if you go th- I've had a bad experience they call it um I forgot what it's called it's not turns there's an there's the negative side effects of it it's called what's it called I can't remember now but yeah there's a negative side effect um to having too much uh to having this in your body and not cleansing it you have to be on an extremely healthy diet you have to go to toilet maybe like like have to do a number two like three times a day um just to cleanse this from your system once you consume it and all the nastiness all the like all the bad stuff in your body will come straight out of you apparently it clears your mind like you have clear mind clarity of thinking like it yeah it's meant to have so many beneficial um side effects but i had i when i took this i didn't use it properly and I, I had a very negative side effect. I actually ended up in hospital. Now, I will probably talk about that. It's going to be a very short video, a very short video. But I'll probably talk about that um, in another video when I do more research and remember what the side effect is called, the negative side effect. I think they call it turns or something, the negative side effect. But I had one of those turns and um, it was, and I ended up in hospital. So I'll go through that uh, briefly in another video. Um. So that is turpentine. Um, again, looking to turpentine, like as I said, mostly it's used for industrial paint, cl- like cleaning paints off of brushes and stripping paint from walls. But if you have the pure version, you have to make sure it's the edible version. Like it has to be completely pure. And obviously, if you tell anyone that you're going to eat it, they're going to think you're mad and they probably won't give it to you. You have to go to very special places to get this. Like um, if it's in a plastic bottle, it's definitely not um, consumable um yeah you have to be very maybe like herbal shops or like spiritual shops might sell these type of things i my brother bought this for me and he had a funny experience when he went to purchase this apparently this was the only one left on the shelf and he said when he went there there was a woman in the shop who looked really strange and she acted she was acting very funny and it was a very odd day it was a day when i was like going through a lot of my experiences and i kind of was so desperate to try this because i heard it could help i heard it can cleanse the bacteria and the nanotechnology in the body so i was so i was like desperate to try it i asked my brother to go get it for me and he just said that it was a very odd experience that he had when he went to get this and so i, I don't know i would say did this benefit me no not because it, it, I don't know how, but like how useful this is. Not because it wasn't, um, it might not work, but because I didn't use it properly, and I ended up going to hospital. So I would definitely, I would go into another video about that for people who want to know. But I definitely advise you do your research. You take all the precautions necessary. You go on a very strict, healthy diet, and make sure you're going to the, you're going to do number two, like going to the toilet three times a day regularly. 
before you even think about touching this stuff. Um, I was foolish and I didn't do enough research and I wasn't ready when I started trying this. So I would advise to you that, um, yeah, be very careful. Um, and then another thing that I thought I'd mention, I couldn't actually find it, but because um, I ran out, but it's tin foil. Tin foil I used when I was under microwave attacks. Now they didn't use microwave technology on me very often. May I had I had maybe two or three experiences experiences with it, and I would use a lot of tin foil and I'd wrap it. I'd wear, put it on my head, um, and it did because it felt like my brain was being microwaved. It was like a extreme. It was more like it wasn't like a headache. It was like a, it was more like burning. It felt like my head was burning. That's how I would explain it. It feels like your head is burning. So I would get several layers of this and put it on my head. And I had to go to sleep like that one or two times. And before, when I was in a really bad, situ bad situation, I would... When I, but this is before I realised what was going on. But I would think... I thought people were able to like um, connect through my thoughts by some sort of outside technology like that was um in the sky and connected to my and like like connected to my brain so i would i thought if i wore tinfoil on my head and put a hat over it no one could see it and they wouldn't be able to hear my thoughts now that was incorrect because that's not how it works so if you're thinking of putting tinfoil on your head and like going out or like 24 7 because you think it will stop them from hearing your thoughts, that's not gonna work. That's not how it works. Um, the technology that they use is, intern is internal and it's um, nanotechnology. And so it's in the body that they use and it's wearing tinfoil won't stop the signals from being received. So I found it wasn't that, it, was this, it wasn't that effective. It helped when they were using um, microwave technology it only lessens the lessen the pain slightly, but it feels like your head is on fire. That's how the only way I can describe it. It lessened it sl slightly, but it didn't stop it completely. I would still, though, in that experience, try the tin foil again because when you're going through targeting and you're being tortured, any little thing that sort of lessens the the pain is something that you probably you're willing to do. So I, I would definitely do it again, but. I would be caught I would caution anyone out there who wants to wear this outside or like put a hat over it and go outside because obviously it's gonna look strange and people are gonna think something's wrong with you and you know it's just not gonna look it's not gonna be the best look. So um so yeah, I did use tin foil. It wasn't it's not that effective on other attacks. Like when I was feeling the pain in my back, for example, if I put tin foil there, it had no effect. And I say crystals were more effective than tin foil. If at the time I was wishing that there was like a crystal hat that I could wear because that would be way more effective than having tin foil. Tin foil, I would advise, probably is not the most useful. It did lessen the pain slightly, but not by much. Okay, another thing that I purchased. So these are different from probably what you would expect, but I purchased some books. So I will show you. The books that I purchased. Um, so the first one I covered up the front because I didn't like the cover, but this one is called "The Madness of George W. Bush," and I will take this cover off so you can see it. But um, this is how it looks like. Uh, and I would the reason why I purchased this book was because he was it was the closest thing I'd ever heard of targeting targeting like targeted individuals it talked about the Whitaker virus and at the beginning I didn't when I, before I realized it was targeting I thought that the Whitaker virus was responsible for my experience so I went to buy the book so I won't take it off completely but this is how the front cover looks like I don't I don't know why I'm not I didn't like it at the time but I don't like the eyes the eyes disturb me but yeah, and it's like holographic. It's got like three heads. But yeah. But anyway, so it, the it's called uh, The Madness of George W. Bush, A Reflection of Our Collective psych Psychosis. So it talks about psychosis. The person who wrote the book is called Paul Levy. Um, 
and it goes in to talk about the Whitaker code. He talks about it like a virus, a spiritual virus that kind of like has an, like a psychological effect on it, on its targets. And how is he talks about how the society has been affected by the Whitaker virus and how it's made us um, like self-consuming capitalists that, um, and it's, it goes deeper than that. I didn't really get far into the book, unfortunately. Um, it was hard to focus on anything when I was going through my experience. Um, they do try to stop you from focusing um, on a lot of things that you want to do. So it was difficult to con- sit down and concentrate on the book. Although the distraction would have been good, actually. But um, so I didn't get to the, like, through the book. I do think I will try and read it, but not at this moment in time. Because I couldn't read this book all the way through, I would say it probably wasn't the best purchase for me. I don't know how much I spent on it. Maybe, maybe less than £10, £10 or less. But um, it depends. If I read it then and it's good, I'll come back and leave a review of the book. Um, I wouldn't purchase this again only because I didn't read it all the way through. And so, and I, the information was interesting but it wasn't useful to me. Yeah, I would say that it wasn't useful to me. Um, but I will have to review this book at a later time and maybe then come back and say whether I think it's worth purchasing. I just found the Whitaker virus concept very interesting and it was the belief system I had before I started believing in um, targeting done by the government and um, secret societies and um, some unknown forces who use technology to influence the masses. That Before I had that con- like and concept i i was leaning towards this idea of the Whitaker virus and so if you don't know what the Whitaker virus is i might do another video on it once i've read in the, read the book but that's a very interesting concept as well and people might relate to that in terms of what's going on the other one i read and i think this is the last thing yeah is this book now i read this book all the way through i read it in a few days um i was going through if some of you may know the feelings and experiences of possession and possession is like feeling the presence of somebody else in your body controlling your thoughts influencing your mind and like your emotions and it's i'll probably have to like for those of you who don't haven't been watching my videos when i talked about how possession felt like and my experiences and some of the vlogs that i did um talking about possession it's like, it was quite aggressive and I could feel it before. I don't now, since I'm on the medication, don't feel possession that much uh, now. I don't feel it as much as I, I actually have a theory behind, from my experience, um, you know, I believe that most people are feel have ex- experienced possession at least, but because I'm on the medication, I'm no longer sensitive to it uh now so yeah so it's harder to be able to tell when somebody's present or not i don't get the feeling of like like my head feeling heavy feeling a little bit disconnected a little bit um like my consciousness being affected so i don't think i get as much as before but i do believe that possession is a natural part of our human like condition like our state of being but because i was having extreme um experiences of possession I went to get this book because I found out about shamanism and um, I found shamanism very interesting. Uh, from what I understood of it, it was that shamans were spiritual uh, healers or leaders in different cult- in different ethnic cultures and they would go and retrieve the souls of people when they had traumatic experiences. This is a very interesting book. I might do another review of it later, but I'll quickly summarise so when you go through a traumatic event, sometimes your soul has been stolen. Now, it can be from people you love as well as people who are strangers and people who... Um, who this, Sorry, my battery is going low, so... But it can be from people you love as well as strangers. But what happens is sometimes, for example... I'll just give you an example, and I might do another video on it to go into more... Go deeper. For example, a mother who has a child, she may feel jealous of her child and indirectly steals that child's soul by the way she treats her, like treating her badly, causing her to be traumatic, causing her to feel traumatic events. Or maybe a lover, somebody's lover takes a part of their soul and captures it and keeps it, like keeps it like to themselves. 
to like try and own that person and the shamans would and you haven't you would feel it you would feel it the repercussions of someone stealing part of your soul because sometimes you may never connect to have you have you lost your child self normally it's a child self that is affected so we have a mature side of our, of our souls um like our, or ourselves as we develop and we grow into adults but we never sometimes we have a child self like a childish side to us that we never connect with sometimes people's child selves or their soul which is like like still needs to be nurtured has been stolen from them a kidnapped from them and so um shamans go on a, a long journey a spiritual journey to go and retrieve these other sides of people and to restore them to being a full human being to being a full soul to being their whole selves so it's a very interesting book i definitely would advise i would definitely buy this again um i can't remember how much it cost me i don't think it was more than 10 pounds um it's called soul retrieval uh by sandra ingraman now i'm going to read it again because it was so fascinating and i have kind of forgotten a lot about what was in the book because i haven't done it in a while I haven't read it in a while but like um i will come back and probably do a review of the book and talk a bit more about what i learned but i would definitely advise this book i'm going to put these books and um these things in the um comments section or the description box below but i'm not sure some of the places i'm not sure where i got i can't remember where i got them from so i might not have a link as to where you can find these things but um yeah you if you do your if you just type in on google i'm sure you'll be able to find most of these things but this is a very interesting book and anyone who deals with, with possession or feels like their soul has been stolen parts of their body like parts of them they can't feel or connect with parts of their body sometimes it's because it's been stolen by their handlers um i felt that with my heart like my ha like one of the handlers kept trying to steal um my heart and like keep it keep it locked up and they do this very com like very often they will take when somebody's born they will take a part of them and keep a prisoner that's how they control them it's a very spiritual kind of like esoterical way of doing things but yeah i'll have to talk about that in more depth in another video but um so i do advise like for those who deal with possession or who are interested in shamanism this is a very good book it talks about the journey that shamans go on to retrieve the soul or how you can retrieve your own soul or gives you insight at least into it i would advise that you don't even if you read the book and you want to practice some of these things i wouldn't do it without like doing more research and like you know because I'm very careful, I'm very cautious of the things we do um, and the effect it has on us and when we do them without knowing properly what we're doing. So just be very careful, but you can read this out of just like interest. But I, if you wanted to practice it, then I'll be very careful and I wouldn't go just off this book alone. Um, I think that is almost, that's the last thing that I have present with me. Another thing that I purchased, I don't have on me at the moment, was a device. Now I can't remember what the device was called, but it was... I bought it from a spy shop and I can't even remember where the spy shop was, but it was somewhere in London and it was a device that you can use to listen through the walls. Now this is when I was paranoid that my neighbors were um, spying on me. So I bought this device and you put it against the wall and you can hear what's going on on the other side of the wall. Um, so I would never used it for spying purposes. I used it to test on my body where um, I can feel there was interference by like radio waves so i used that to tell where i was being interfered with and you might see that on a very old video i don't know if i'll be able to put that in here but maybe i'll be able to find it that cost me about i think it was 200 pounds and i found that a very interesting device because i tested it on other people and i found it could detect where people had had illnesses your body gives off a different frequency in areas where you're feeling pain so that's one of the things that i discovered and i have some very deep theories on that and i won't go into them now would i buy that again i think i would buy again but as to how practical it is i don't know but for me it helped me determine that i was being interfered with through signals being sent to my body it's either signals coming out of my body or signals going into my body the device can't tell you which direction it's going but it can detect signals and so i found that very useful but you can go back to my older videos to see um, me proving that i had been into that 
there were signals being interfering with my body. Um, and then the last thing I bought, which a lot of you probably would be interested in buying, um, is I think it was called Quay, Quay, Quay Wave. And it's an online device. Apparently, they advertise it as an EMF um, protector. It protects you against EMF. And so I bought it. I think it was like £150, maybe £200. And I used it for one day. And what how it works is apparently it sends off random different signals and it interferes with any EMFs technology being directed at you or any microwave technology being directed at you to deter it from from them from hearing your thoughts or to interfering with your body now i found as soon as i switch it on it made a sound it's very you can't hear it it's like very quiet you're meant to keep it on you like 24 7 um and then i heard the voices the voices and they were saying that oh what's she doing they couldn't really text me at first but then it took them like five, a few seconds to um, hack the system, the device, and override it. And like, and they were sending their own frequencies at it. So I found it didn't wasn't effective long term. It only lasted for like maybe ten minutes, and then they hacked it because their technology is way more advanced than just a little device that you carry, you wear as a necklace. Their technology can overcome all of those type of things. They can counteract the, they can record the wave. Um, sync with it and then counteract it so i didn't find that device useful so i sent it back and that's why i don't have it and i think it cost me about like 200 pounds um so or maybe 300 dollars i'm not sure but um to me that wasn't worth it um i sent it back after the week because i realized it wasn't going to do what i wanted it to do overall i would say that most things i tried were not that effective some of they mostly reduced the experience that I was had the negative experiences that I was having the most effective thing I have tried is the medication um in terms of reducing pains and influences and possessions and all those type of things it has had the most effect but not everybody wants to go on the medication and I completely respect their own their, their integrity and their like whatever they choose to do so I would say the things that I think were most beneficial to me were the crystals and um I think uh, the crystals, the ones which I pass over my body to clear me from possession, also the ones which I wear to sleep every night to stop negative um, dreams, to prevent negative dreams. I really love that Soul Retriever book, but that's only because I was dealing with possession, so not everybody will want that book. Um, and then, of course, I suppose the last thing I would say is, um, I won't show it, but I do have a big Bible that I bought, and um, I found that was helpful because it just gave me encouragement. Um, other than that, yeah, I probably wouldn't purchase the other things. Um, also, another thing that I for almost forgot. This is probably one of the cheapest things that you can purchase that helps me. But um, garlic. So this was when I was at, when they were sexually harassing me. So they were causing like pains in my private parts. Um, I would mash up garlic and just um, spread the liquid in my on my private on the surface of my private area, and that would help to reduce the pain that I was feeling. And so I would definitely that did help, and it was the only thing that helped. So I would definitely advise either you eat garlic, like the raw garlic, and it would help to um, the effects of the nanotechnology in the body. Or you spread it on the parts of your body that causes you, where they're inducing pain in your body, and that helps to reduce the effects of it. So that's what I found. But um, yeah, those are the things that I would advise. Uh, if I think of anything else, I will come back to you. If you guys have had any things that helped you with your experience, please let me know in a comment section. I'm sure other viewers and users and video, um, and followers would love to see what benefited you. Only things that help, like. Oh, actually and also if you've tried something that hasn't helped also comment on that things that haven't um, benefited you as well but yeah so ev everybody else can read it and i'm going to read it as well and see what you found useful and what you didn't find useful um as i said to you before i am going to talk about other topics now on my channel um i'm trying to 
express all other areas of my personality other than just targeting and those type of things there are also areas i want to tackle that i think will help targeted individuals like finances so i am going to start doing videos on finances how to make money how to save money how to budget all those type of things just because i know people who suffer with targeting um especially people who suffer mental illnesses and this like illness in general and disability money can be a big issue for us and one of the ways that they do try to get us is through targeting our finances. They target us in all areas of our life, but finances is one thing that I I would hope to help people with. So I will do videos on um, finances. Um, I would caution anyone if they want to spend a lot of money on anything that they think is going to help them. Because I found, as I said before, most things didn't really help. They just had like a slight, made a numb, a bit slight, slight numbing effect, but it didn't prevent it from happening. Um, I found only the medication to be the most effective and I believe that and that's because of the dopamine um, the dopamine um, re re um, suppressor so it suppresses dopamine the chemical in the brain that helps release that helps expose you to other gateways to other realities and so that's been the most effective but um, yeah so I would say be very cautious to what you do spend your money on I would advise that you're very that you you're very skeptical with all, all things that you think are going to prevent you from going through the experience. Um, I spent my money, I wasted a lot of money on things I didn't actually need. And I found, and I found that majority of things did not help. So I would advise, you know, be careful with what you spend your money on. Um, most of the things don't help. And there are a lot of people trying to take advantage of you. Um, so, you know, they create products, tell you it's going to help you and has no, it has little to no effect. So just be very cautious and try and save your money. I will do some money videos because I think it's more important that you save your money and make sure you don't go into financial debt because that's the worst position and that weakens you a lot. So and you don't want to be like left homeless in when you're going through this experience because that's the worst state like situation to be in. So anyway, people, um, I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.